Hey guys, Lisa Salvatore here recording this video for the full moon in Aries that takes place October 13th, 1126 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Somebody actually asked me, a client of mine asked me, how is it that the moon, when it's a full moon, is in a different sign than where we are at the moment? So right now we're under Libra because the sun is in Libra. And this full moon is in Aries because what happens is when the sun and the moon are in opposition to each other, that is when we have a full moon. So a full moon always occurs in the opposite sign that the sun is in, which right now is the sun is in Libra. So this full moon will be in Aries. Okay. Now when we have new moons, they're in the same sign as the sun because that's when the sun and the moon are in alignment with each other perfectly. So that is a new moon, but the full moon is when they're opposite of each other, okay? So I just wanted to clarify that. So right now, this full moon coming up on the 13th is a full moon in Aries. It is highly charged, It uh, all full moons are, but this one more so, there's a lot going on right now. Um, as you know, Pluto just stationed direct back on October 7th, I'm sorry, October 3rd, Pluto turned direct and Pluto is a big power player right now with this full moon. So everything that Pluto represents is about deep transformation and um, the taboo. It rules the sign of Scorpio, Pluto, and it also rules over things that we prefer to keep under the belly, under the surface, that sometimes we don't even recognize that they're there until something comes in to kind of strip us of, you know, these layers where we're faced with our fears, right? Because that's what Pluto rules over is our fears, our, it also rules our desires, our longings, all of that. Because Pluto just actually stationed direct, there's still like a, a high emphasis on this planet at the moment and everything that it represents, and we do feel it. But the thing about Pluto is that it's very um, intense, but it's very, it's like a, a slow pulsing intensity. So this is something that is always felt deeply underneath the surface and it sometimes comes up at the at very inconvenient times and this full moon is going to be one of those times. So the reason why I'm saying this is because there's a bit of an edge to the air at the moment. I'm sure that a lot of you have been feeling this. Um, you could be experiencing headaches. I know I have. Uh, the reason for that, obviously, when moons are getting to the point of being full, there are literal energy surges, and we do feel that in our body. Moons are water, right? We do feel that in our body, but also Aries is the sign that rules over the head, over the body part of the head. So, you know, headaches are not uncommon right now. It's a fire-influenced moon because Aries is a fire sign, and fire is hot, and it moves, and it's charged, so it's very energetic. And then Combining that with the Pluto, because this full moon is squaring Pluto, it's the most prominent aspect that we've got right now with this full moon. So intensity, um, it could be some anger, there could even potentially be some violent um, you know, thoughts or, you know, doesn't necessarily have to go that way, but that could be, there could be some volatility that is surrounding this full moon. So you want to just be careful. You want to be conscious of your thoughts right now. You want to, if any of, um, if there's any important conversations that you need to have, especially when it has to do with relationships, because, you know, right now we're under Libra season, Libra rules over relationships. Um, this is a big time of partnerships, relationships, where things can either get really, really good or on the other side of that, they can get really, really um, negative and, and charged and there could be some explosive arguments and things like that. Things could be getting uncovered that we may or may not like or that we may or may not want to deal with. But you know, when Pluto comes in, it's like, well, no, now you have to deal with this because I'm gonna force this on you to deal with it. So there could be some of that going on. So the key is to try to stay in your power and not freak out, not lose it, not get angry. If you could channel that energy into something constructive, whether that be, you know, working out, whether that be, you know, talking things out in a calm manner, but try not to fly off the handle because the potential for that is going to be really high right now. Um, when you look at the, the Libra Aries axis, which is where this full moon is, Libra is the sign that is all about the other. It's the sign of relationships. And then you've got Aries where this full moon is, and Aries is a sign that is all about the self because it rules over the first house in astrology, which is the house of the, the self. So when you've got um, a full moon here with on one, on one side about the other and on the other side about self, there's a polarity here that's happening and there's got to be some kind of a balance struck between selfish 
Ness, which would be Aries, and then selflessness, which is Libra. So you want to try to stay in the middle there, but with all this Pluto activation that's happening, it could be kind of tricky. So that's why, you know, the more you can just go within right now and just process whatever it is that comes up for you and try not to overthink it or, you know, try to find the solution. One, two, three, just kind of really go deep within and figure out what it is that is coming up for you and why. There's also a lot of things that are surfacing from the past, from the way, way, way distant past. Um, could be things coming up from childhood, behaviors, you know, Pluto rules over compulsive behaviors. So there's, in, in what ways are you limiting yourself? That's a big key right now with this full moon is kind of like breaking the ties that bind you, the limitations that you're putting on yourself. Um, you could be holding yourself back in ways in which you're starting to recognize and getting frustrated, but that's good because the more frustrated you get, the more you're gonna release and wanna break free from that. So channel that energy of the intensity of this full moon. If you can channel it to self and figure out how to make things better for you or how to kind of override some of these patterns from the past of ways in which you might feel like you've been limiting yourself or, or sticking yourself in one spot where you know you want movement forward, that's a really good way to um, work with this energy to release yourself from things that are not working for you. It could simply just be the self-talk that you give, you, you know, your self-criticism, the self-doubt. Um, if it comes over to the relationship side, you know, in what ways can you be making your relationships uh, more, you know, better, improving, communication skills, things like that. All of that can be coming up at this time. But remember, there is an edge here because of Pluto. I just want to be clear on that because it is intense. It's very intense. There's a buzz going on right now. I'm sure many of you feel this, um, the edginess surrounding this cycle at the moment. Um, let's not forget that Venus has also entered Scorpio just a couple of days ago. Venus, the love planet, is now in Scorpio, which is also Pluto's, Pluto rules Scorpio. So there's a lot of Scorpionic energy happening right now, which is very deep and intense. When Venus goes into Scorpio, it's like, again, all of those things, those deep-seated, I'll call them issues, or the deep-seated um, fears, the longings, all of that stuff is kind of brought up to the surface for us to deal with, to sit with and to deal with. And now because it's a full moon, it's heightened. So there, the, again, there's a lot of that. Using your voice, speaking your truth, um, being true to yourself is extremely important right now. And if you feel that you can't be, then just kind of stay quiet and just be, just be, just simply be, because that's really all that you can do right now is just to take care of yourself and try to make the best of this energy because it is intense. We also have a full moon um, aspect with the planet Jupiter, and it's a sextile, so it's an, a beneficial aspect. So we do have one beneficial aspect here to kind of uh, lessen perhaps a little bit of the Pluto, but I don't want to say that it's going to override it because the strongest influence we have right now is definitely the square to Pluto. It's very intense. The Jupiter aspect is simply there to kind of smooth things over a little bit. So if you do go out of line, step out of line, say something you regret, you know, you can probably correct the damage with a little bit of um, goodwill that Jupiter could provide, but again, it's not that strong compared to the Pluto, so I just want to be clear about that. Really watch your, um, your words, watch, your, watch your, uh, your temper, all of that at this time. Um, I'm going to pull a numerology guidance card just to give another little message about this full moon. That one wanted to come out. <laughs> surrender. 91, surrender. I'm just going to read you what it says in this book. Surrender is, again, with Pluto, Plutonian energy is all about um, surrender because Pluto is always about what's hidden and what we suppress. So when you surrender, when you face it and you actually say, you know what, I'm going to let go of what's holding me back. I'm going to release what I need to say, what I need to do, whatever it is that's blocking me. I'm going to own it. I'm going to face it. And I'm going to try to rise up and move forward. That's, that's Pluto, right? And so that's surrender. But let's see what it actually says. Okay. This card indicates a need to surrender your attachment to a particular situation or preferred outcome because your inability to let go is impending your success. Desperation blocks manifestation. Therefore, the more you struggle to attract your desire, the more you push it away. By drawing this card, you are being encouraged to detach from the situation and surrender the outcome to the divine. In order to attract what you want, you must give the universe space to deliver your request. This can only be achieved by getting out of the way so that everything can unfold as it should. It isn't your job to make it happen. It is simply your job to allow it to happen. 
When, the, when you surrender the outcome to the divine, you let the magic flow. In order to improve your current situation, you are being asked to adjust to and harmonize with the natural rhythm and cycles of your life. Cycles that are encouraging you to let go, trust, and surrender. Make peace with your life as it is today and appreciate what you already have. When you do what brings you joy rather than fret about the end result, divine order and timing will bring the perfect outcome your way. The affirmation is, I receive the best possible outcome when I surrender to the divine. Okay, so that's pretty self-explanatory to surrender right now, um, to let go where you need to and where you can and just stop trying to control outcomes because again, Pluto is also about control. So I hope that this has helped you. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to be doing another video soon about the Mercury retrograde that's coming up on Halloween. That one is in Scorpio. That is going to also be intense. Um, you know, the next like six to eight weeks are really going to be, <laughs> um, there's going to be a lot going on. So I'll probably be back a couple of times with some videos and I'll have some new moon readings up. And if you would like a private consultation, you can find me Click on the link below, lisasalvatore.com, and I will talk to you all real soon. Happy full moon and take good care of yourselves. Bye.